Well, good evening on the 23rd of January, 23. It's just hit five o'clock there. And uh, the light's fading. This is probably, I'd say, the worst part of the day, with exception to bedtime, of course, which... Uh, but bedtime generally means you've got to uh, sleep ahead of you, but uh, somehow dusk is always a, a very difficult part of the day, isn't it? It's a long time till the daylight returns, especially still in January. I've kind of a mixed bag today. I've uh, had business to attend to in Aberfeldy. I stopped at Amory and done a short vlog, but I've decided not to do anything with it. It was more speaking to you know my own thoughts, and uh, then I was popped out to uh, the late Mrs. Orchison's property on the western edge of Maine Estate. You know, I'll pop that onto this uh, vlog. But uh, I'm. Um, I'm feeling very much that uh, I'm in a sort of no-man's-land situation currently. I'm between two divides. It's almost like... Uh, it's almost like accepting something's ending and uh, not knowing what the new beginning is. Or if the ending is the beginning. See, it's very difficult. I, I, I feel that um, since last summer there's been so many so many events which I thought I had um, put to rest in my own life um, were uh, resurfaced as a result of um, a situation that occurred. It didn't happen right away, but the death experience over here didn't didn't obviously help. But I did take charge of things for a little while, well as best I could, I have to say. But uh, I suspect that probably in August and maybe late August and parts of September weren't, weren't too bad, and, and I suppose maybe in October. There was a little bit of a lift when I got to the continent. Um, the return journey from Malta uh, been full so you know been so full of expectation and then been disappointed. I think that carried through December and um, Christmas was very low key. It wasn't it wasn't entirely depressing, but it was not. It wasn't memorable either. But as we've moved into January, I find January's been a very difficult month. I normally find that anyway, and I think most people do. But January has been a... Uh, it's been quite difficult, and I've tried to reach out as best I can and, uh, in certain areas. and. I am a little concerned that um, if I don't shake off this uh, dark mood of mine that uh, I may well carry this into the spring and the summer again and I don't want that. It's all very easy to uh, be down. I was thinking earlier, <clears throat> just outside Mrs. Orchison's old property actually, I was sitting thinking of a friend I was at school with. He sadly passed away just a few years back, five years ago perhaps. Maybe slightly more when I think about it. And um, his mother's gone as well now. But I, I said, I went to his mum and I said, please tell me what happened. We were very close friends and he, I saw him in the bus one day. I, I felt he was rather distant. And I sat with him and asked if everything was okay, and he nodded. But I could tell that uh, things were not okay at all. 
I offered them some, well, I offered them some tobacco at least, and uh, he, he thanked me graciously and he said that it would, it would help. But um, he was such a good humoured friend, he was always a pleasure to bang into. And when I shopped in the the Creef Co-op before uh, they started bashing my ankles with the shopping trolleys, we used to spend many a time just chatting and having a bit of a laugh and I, I suppose I quite missed that too. But I said to his mother, I says, um, what was it? And she said, he sat down one day on his couch and he refused to speak to anyone ever again. And he refused to eat. I said, he didn't speak. No, the, no, you, you, you couldn't get him to speak. He wouldn't speak. Clinical depression. that I find it incredulous that someone of that type of personality would ever suffer from clinical depression. And she said, yes, we did think that too. The mind is very fragile, isn't it? It's um, a sequence of uh, traumatic very traumatic events can trigger lots of uh, long-term problems, but uh, you have to remain upbeat and strong. Being upbeat doesn't mean you don't care. It just means you're trying to you know, safeguard your own mind from a further collapse. I was suggesting today as well, let me just sip some tea. I make tea and I never drink it quickly enough. Goodness me, it's already gone tepid. I um, actually just let, I want to get some hot tea. Bear with me, please. Yes, thank you for waiting. I think with, um, ever since the, uh, design kettles to boil at uh, 93 degrees Celsius instead of 100 degrees. This is why we don't get hot tea. So I may return to the situation of putting my little pot of water inside the uh, the flames of the fire and ensuring it uh, is always piping hot for making strong tea. But yes, I, I do feel I've had my uh, own very particular journey these last uh, months. And um, although I don't entirely blame Up and Down, because Up and Down's, she, I mean, she's, uh, she's got her own life and she's got uh, that Georgian mansion to, and I think she overstretched herself ever so slightly by taking it on. And I know that she's been very busy, but, um, and I don't think she really meant that, um, entirely that I was a hideous cretin, but uh, she does get very fiery up and down, and uh, I do forgive her, you see. I, I know her ever so well, and uh, although I wouldn't like to say that uh, I'm not in a position to be trod upon or walked over in life, I, I do understand her position. I don't. I don't hold any grudges to the, uh, my good friend up and down. I just um, accept that this is the way it's been. But I also respect her decisions too. And uh, but I'm, I'm still very keen in up and down in regards to um, the jolliness that we shared. And sometimes dates come to mind, and I. You know, I'm talking calendar dates, not the dates we get at Christmas time. Although I did take a down a, you know, a box of fruit and other produce and she 
I think she put it in the recycle bin, but um, I was very disturbed to come home and discover the gooseberries and the, um, the dates hadn't been included. And I bought her lovely dates and that was in August and I thought to myself, she, she would adore these, she likes to nibble on a date. But um, of course it wasn't to be. And I'm not sure if she did enjoy anything. She's never said nothing. She never says thank you for anything. She's very... When it comes to uh, any type of apology or any type of, uh, you know, gratitude, she's rather... She rather fiercely holds it against her, and, you know, to her chest, and she says, no, you're not getting any gratitude from me. I'm very grateful for the 256,000 uh, 713 pounds and 63 pounds, but you're not getting a penny of it back. <laughs> <coughs> but no, I just, I think that um, in all seriousness, it's been a, it's been a rather long haul. And I definitely miss the, uh, I think the fact that I was uh, so looking forward to having a number of, um, excursions and journeys and days out and good laughs and cups of tea and just anything but the circumstances at that point in time were just so against us as they always were always were I don't know if uh, if every friend and every couple you know, I'm talking friend or, you know, platonic friendship, or at least, um, or even, you know, people in a long-term relationship. I don't understand why so many have it so easily. It appears that way, at least. But I'm sure they all have uh, the upsets and ups and downs, but not as, not like me and up and down. It's been... Incredibly difficult. I often think maybe she listens to too much advice of her fake friends, and I think she perhaps makes judgment on some of their advice and without thinking through. And I think, in essence, um, I think because of it, she's probably sitting, mulling things over and thinking. Perhaps I've actually rejected the biggest blessing in my life. But she's probably thought about it too. She's probably thought, you know, I, I like, this is the way I like my life to be, and pondering about the Georgian mansion all day and sitting by my piano. I mean, I mean she could have been a I'm, I'm quite sure she could have been an international soprano, uh, sopranoist or, or even a uh, concert pianist if she'd put her mind to it, but uh, she's a very intelligent person, but she, she gets rather lazy when it comes to certain aspects of living and uh, she likes just to, you know, lay about and I think the most the bit, well, part of my understanding of it is, is the biggest exertion she ever has in her life is lifting up a, um, a um, pencil case that she keeps her pens and pencils in, of course, but uh, and she pulls the pens out and scribbles on the edge of the newspaper and then starts the uh, crosswords. And, uh, you know, she's, I think I mentioned before, she's a... Uh, Monday's crossword day, is it, or it's Tuesday, I can't remember now. So long since I've seen I can't even remember. But, um, as much as I'm distant from her, I'm almost sure she must feel distant from me, and I'm sure she does miss me in her own little way. But of course, she's never going to mention that to me, never. But anyway, I. I best not make this vlog too long because I'm, I'm going to put in a little bit about uh, 
This is Otterson's house here. So I don't think I'll be doing many more vlogs for a while. I think um, I think I need a rest from uh, vlogging. I think I have to. Well, I might have to dismantle my Christmas tree. It offers such beauty and illumination in the evening. I'm very reluctant to take it down. But I must. Uh, I must consider that uh, the months now have uh, extended. And uh, if up and down had been in touch, maybe in December, we might have been in a different position, but it's, it's just taken too long for, for us to have a little chat and a cup of tea and some ginger cake or something, you know. But, um, best not to be sad, eh? It's very easy to be sad. It's very easy to get your head lowered onto your chest and keep it there. Hi, good afternoon on the 23rd of January, 23. I talked, uh, well, a recent vlog, I talked about a uh, very particular woman called Mrs. Orchison and how fond I was of uh, Mrs. Orchison who was 98 years of age. She lived in this property at the West, uh, it's called the West Lodge at the West End of, uh, well it's not quite the West End of Mania Estate because Mania Estate extends still a bit further back from where I'm sitting with the car. But um, these are the Golden Gates. And um, in the 1970s, they were, well, they were painted almost every year, as I recall. They were bright gold. They looked, uh, they looked like the gates you'd get to a, a fairy castle or something. Of course, this... Uh, fence that surrounded uh, Mrs. Otterson's property it was uh, also painted and the holly tree was certainly not that size. I won't go into the property, it's, uh, it's very much uh, and uh, dishevelled and disrepair unfortunately. You may just see the, the crows and the jackdaws who've made their home there. It was a very, very lovely house to visit. And uh, she always had a coal fire on. I think she, I think she came from Corby. I think I remember her telling me she came from Corby. Something had occurred and she came north from Corby. And she settled here and lived her life out in this little property. Of course, at that time, there would be very few passing vehicles, just the estate workers. And um, down this way, down at the other side of the, uh, the field there that I'm pointing, there's um, the shaggy. Shaggy Burn, who she used to collect her water and bathe in, quite secluded. And just upstream there, um, about 600 metres maybe, maybe less, the Shaggy and the Kelty, um, form a confluence. I should make a, a rather thorough video about the estate sometime. But anyway, I wanted to show you Mrs. Alterson's house. I might just pop out and say, uh, God bless her. This 
house there's fond memories there's a fireplace in there you see God bless you Mrs Orchison here's our front door you see it was always open isn't that strange her door was always open well of course maybe not at night time but do you know what I mean this is a little garden I mentioned there's a gate which is get the strawberries at the back you see the fence it's such a mess such a mess the golden gates now they're golden with rust everything's all wreck and ruin here even the dikes all fallen down I used to put that but there she goes you may just hear the river. <laughs> <laughs> 